but I figured I would uh, try to throw this little video up. I found some old pictures of my car and uh, some old times, I guess. Uh, this is when I worked for Scooter uh, 25 years ago. So when I uh, first uh, put the big motor in my car, I had a street motor in this car for quite a while. And uh, this is before the car was ever painted. It was all primer and pieces, the Frankenstein bug, pieces and parts that nobody wanted. But this is my uh, 82 by 88 motor. This motor ran 11, uh, 1160s, 1170s. No, I think it might have gone like some 50s at the end. And uh, I got that motor for my birthday and uh, ended up losing that. It got taken back from me or something. I don't know. I don't have it anymore. It's uh, in somebody else's car now. But uh, this is Scooter shot before there was a loft back there or anything. It's uh, pretty cool. This is a lot of people think my car was ever never actually down there, but uh, it actually was down there at one time. So. Let me see if I can get back to the, uh, I think I could just flip through these. Here's uh, Darlington, South Carolina. This is uh, after the car's all primered one color. We headed up to uh, Darlington Raceway. This was my first time out of the state. I was pretty young here. I was about uh, 18 years old, 19. Uh, next park next to us, you'll see the Berg, the black car. That's uh, Gary Berg over there. We used to... Uh, hang out with them, sort of grew up around Gene and stuff. That's me starting a the generator there. Wayne Horton standing over the car there. That was the, you know, he was the ladies man. He used to get all the women when we go on the road trip. And then Scooter there, working on the car. And I think Steve Logue went with us. And uh, possibly Rick Morrow was at this race also. Uh, pretty young too. This had to be back in the early 80s here. There's Gene talking to Scooter. They're uh, looking the car over. This is a fairly new motor in here. And I uh, actually had the uh, oil pump relief cover. It was pretty new that Gene had come out with. And I put one on my car and the ball used to stick in them. I'm sure if you bought one you were familiar with that issue. I'm sure they fixed it. But Gene came over and actually fixed it for me. And uh, they knocked the ball out with a screwdriver and a hammer and the ball went flying across the parking lot. I was sure that I wasn't going to be able to race this day. There's uh, Gene. That's the uh, guy that inspired me to uh, work on Volkswagens. He was uh, quite the talented man. Whether it was uh, writing articles about Volkswagens, designing parts, or just encouraging you to uh, take the next step. There they are working on the oil pump. There's uh, Gary and his girlfriend at the time. and uh, That's their uh, the Berg bomber they called it. That's the black car. Pretty awesome ride. There's Gene. Not liking to be photographed. Although he photographed everybody. He carried a camera with him everywhere. Which I thought was very funny. And uh, always took pictures anywhere he went. I'm sure there's uh, quite the photo gallery somewhere of pictures. There's Darlington. Uh, good look. It's got the two towers, the concrete bleachers, and uh, just awesome. You know, it's the first time that you've ever raced a car at a real track. It was a quite an experience for me that day. There's another shot of the track from the concrete bleachers. They had just had a tractor pull on this track, and they cleaned the sand off the best they could, but it was still a pretty fun ride on the first pass. There's uh, one of the passes. I'm racing one of the Charles and Larry, or Charles and Larry, I think it was the name of the car. It was a compact from back in the day. Pretty fast car. There's a picture of the car getting ready to go up to the uh, starting line. You, know, you notice the steel wheels on front, 135 Michelins, you know, and some uh, Mitchells in the back. Look at the camber back there. That was before we learned about. Setting the rear suspension and stuff, preloading everything. Your scooter when he was about 20 years old. There's a picture of the car on the starting line. There's me racing Ricky McGarity. Uh, I don't know, a lot of you guys know Ricky McGarity, but he was a national record holder. I had a chance to uh, get to see Ricky McGarry at a race I went to with Noel and meet one of his cousins or nephews, and I lost his phone number, lost touch with him, but really good people and uh, 
one of the pioneers in making Volkswagens go fast. He had every record I think there was. And that car is the race shop guy. It's over in Europe now. But uh, Ricky McGarity is just one of those guys you can talk to for hours. I can anyway. He was at the uh, races and uh, it was sort of a treat for some people that knew who he was to get to talk to him. Here's a couple other bugs from back in the day. You gotta remember this is probably in the early 80s. So there's the RS crew, uh, the original RS crew, I guess. That's uh, me sitting on the back of the trailer there with hair looking at Scooter. I'm actually smiling. The scooter's looking for a jet, I'm sure, or something. And there's Steve Logue in the middle there. He's a lawyer now. And then Wayne Horton. Not sure what he's doing, sort of lost touch with him. Here's a car called the Dixie Twister. Uh, it was for sale not too long ago. It was like a six second bug back in the day. Pretty cool ride. Another side of the track. Here's a shot of uh, Ricky McGarity's car. I'm sure you can't really see very well. Another side of the track. There's a buggy. This is at Darlington still. There's uh, Jeff Barrett, uh, Jeff and Sandy Barrett, they were pioneers in Volkswagen racing also. They had a, a couple records with this car, and I uh, forget the class, but a uh, very competitive car. And then they went on to uh, race in Super Gas and Super Comp and NHRA racing. They, uh, it's a wife and a husband team. They travel around the country and uh, race really good people. I got to uh, get back in touch with them when I was funny car racing. There's the bird car in action, leaving the starting line with the wheels up. Uh, always fun to watch that thing run. It uh, turned about 10,000, 12,000 RPM at the time, and uh, it was just a treat to watch it. There's a really old picture of my car. This is probably like 80, 81, maybe 79, I don't know. This is Orlando Speed World before there was any guardrail or trees, uh, single guardrail. No trees are very few. Uh, me and my buddy Randy planted almost all the all the landscaping at Orlando Speed World, and we actually converted this track from a single guardrail track to a double, and then from a double to a concrete barrier. So I sort of grew up at Speed World. I sort of love racing there, and it'll always be sort of a special place for me. There's another picture of the track, and uh, it's pretty uh, pretty barren. There's uh this is Warner Robins, Georgia. Uh, this is a this was an all right race. I think Scooter was sort of not getting along with anybody at this race. And it's got a 752 on the dial in on the car. That's eighth mile racing. Uh, the one good thing about this day was I had Gene Berg as my pit crew. He was my pit guy all day and uh, raced with me at this race, and I'll never forget that. Actually went a few rounds at this race. Uh, we had a fuel pump issue and uh, we just dialed what the guy was dialed next to us and uh, treat everybody and the car 60 foot real hard so we had a really good day. That was actually Farmington there. That was a different track. This is uh, Warner Robins again. Maybe Farmington again. There I am sitting in the car. This is the same car that's in the garage now that I still race. There's a bunch of old Volkswagens from the day. This is uh, Farmington, North Carolina, before they had the new tower. And uh, this was a really cool track. Uh, you could actually go off the track and get in some grass before you got into the guardrail here. There's the car has got the wheels up and the burnout. <laughs> There's a picture of Bug Magic. This is a picture of Scooter Shop before he built the loft area in the back. And, uh, Filled it with a bunch of stuff. I think that's Steve Lowe taking a look inside the car there. I actually got to drive this car a couple times. It's a national record holder. Uh, I think it's a couple of time event winner at the Gator Nationals and a couple other national events. There's another shot. There's a shot of Rick's turbo car, a wheel uh, of it. That's a street car that we had. It ran, I think it ran like 1070s back in the... Uh, early 80s, late 80s. There's a shot of the inside of uh, Bug Magic. It's a chop top, the whole uh, top of its glass. And uh, this car was a 
just uh, you know an awesome experience for me to drive. I got to work on this for many years. I would prep it, and me and Scooter would race it together. And uh, I used to love to get the car ready, and then he would check it over, and we'd go to the track, and uh, you know we'd change the plugs and jet every pass, whatever the air density was or the weather did. We were always record racing with this car, and uh, I was always excited to take to the track. After working for him for about 10 years, I think he uh, let me drive the car. And the first time, the first opportunity I got to make a pass, the throttle cable broke in the uh, right before I uh, left the starting line. And uh, he actually gave me a chance to drive the car a couple times after that, so I'll never forget that opportunity. Uh, very cool. There's uh, my car again, painted white with uh, hubcaps and bumpers and stuff. This is when I used to terrorize JC. Uh, John Clark, he had a white car just like mine. And uh, I used to go around and terrorize Orlando with this thing. It run 11, 50, 60s with a good motor, and I had a street motor that would go 13 O's. There's more evidence of my car inside the shop. And if you look way back in the background there, I don't want to adjust the focus, but you can see Big Daddy in his wheelchair. That's Scooter's dad before he passed away. There's uh, Scooter's car. is 73. I mean, that's one of the times I painted it. It's probably back in the uh, late 80s. There's Big Daddy's car. That's Scooter's dad's ride. It's another 73 basic. You can see flash back there. That's the uh, 66 that I learned how to drive in. There's Big Daddy's uh, rat on his car. Here's a trick old gear from the day. 687. Now I was really getting it back in the 80s. Let me tell you. They didn't have the parts that we have today. And more than likely that was probably a small engine. Here's a Carmen gear that I painted for a buddy that worked at a Volkswagen dealership. Sam Harkey. I painted this uh, for him. It's a 69. That was single stage. Here's uh, one of the first ARPM cases that we know of. Uh, Rick Morrow bought this and uh, the carburetors were just on there for looks. We eventually, this was a turbo engine. Uh, this is the motor that I showed you. The wheel of that one car, this motor was in that. Should be some more videos or pictures of this. My mouse moved. Here's another shot of it. That's Big Daddy's ride again. Here's the uh, side shot of the AR. No, this is an ARPM. Yeah, it is. This is the ARPM case with the 10 millimeter studs, the uh, Corella rods. Uh, it's got the big sump on it. It was a nice piece. Uh, I think it was a uh, 88 millimeter by 94 bore. There's my old race motor there. Used to take that out and then pop the street motor in and drive the car back and forth to work. There's one of the motors I was building in the stand, probably in 1915, one of our shelf motors. This is the first set of 94s that we actually got at the shop, went on this ARPM motor. And uh, before that it was 92s, 90 and a halfs, or you know, 88s. And uh, the 94s came on the scene and sort of uh, changed the uh, displacement that people you know would have on a Volkswagen. You can see these are Autocraft cylinders set up for six studs. We only used four. And the pistons look white on the top because we coated everything. The motor was all uh, coated. There's another shot of the uh, Corella rods and the uh, I think this was a Berg crank, pretty, pretty sure. Berg crank, ARPM case. There's uh, the tops of the pistons. The one in the center is a non-coated and the ones on the side are the uh, coated tops. You can see the lightweight wrist pins over there on the side too. And you can see the profile of the port. There's the intake gasket. I think the uh, heads were probably some uh, Berg pieces. There's Scooter when he was like 12. He's holding up some chrome sheet metal making fun of it I'm sure. And again there's no loft back in the back of the shop. Another shot of the uh, <clears throat> white car. At the time it was white. That's my uh, car that I currently have now. This is my Uncle Mac and uh, Dave Foltz. Uh, this is back in the early 80's. Uh, Dave was a really cool guy. He uh, 
I always had time to spend with people and uh, he used to really like my uncle. Every time I went to the races and saw him he would uh, always let him crew with him. So my uncle passed on. But he never forgot about uh, Dave and uh, you can see there the dial on that was 796 and that was in the quarter mile. This was a, probably one of the first 7 second Volkswagen dragsters. There's another shot of it in the burnout box. Here's an interesting ride there, although interesting looking. This was uh, one of the cars that won a lot. Another shot of uh, Jeff Barrett's stride there. Don't know what Jeff's doing now. He used to be sponsored by Street and Sand Toys in Fort Lauderdale. And the last time I saw him, he was actually racing super comp cars. Lyle and Cherry is right back here. That's their car. And this is a compact that they built. I think this is one of his sons, but uh, it was an awesome ride too. Big wheel stands. There's a picture of uh, Dave Foltz working on his car in between rounds there. You can see the magneto for ignition system. But uh, this car used to get it done. They were doing a tranny swap here. You can see his crew guy with a drive shaft in his hand. And uh, people didn't like to wear shirts back in the 80s. This is one of my favorite pictures of my car. This is Speed Roll. And, uh, you know, my car had that blue tint to it. It wasn't quite white. And uh, this was one of my favorite shots. I think there's uh, two pictures of that. This is also my car, painted with fluorescent paint. And uh, I did that one time. Although it looked great, you know, the sun fades this stuff really fast. And uh, I think I went on vacation. Back before I had a garage, the car cover blew up and faded the top of the fender out. And, uh, Ended up repainting this, obviously. There's another picture of it in Scooter Shop. And uh, again, you can see the tranny bench is pretty bare over there. Not a lot of stuff on the walls. This was in the early days. There's a little snap of mine on the inside. Those black velvet door panels and, uh, you know, very basic. A shot of the motor there. It's uh, pretty basic stuff. 48 Weber's. Squirrel fans, Joe Hunt Magneto, big ass header, some Berg cylinder heads. Uh, I think this was an Okrasa 88 crank with the uh, MP aluminum slipper skirt uh, piston cylinders. I think JC has this motor in his car now. I'm not sure. It was a birthday present that got rescabbed from me. Back to the beginning there. And, uh, that's pretty much it man. A little bit of my uh, history for you there in the early days. Some of uh, where my influence came from. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that all of us have in our past that you just can't ever take back from somebody, you know. I mean these are memories that stay with us forever. And uh, I've lost a lot of pictures and stuff over the years. But all this stuff's in my head. Some of you guys want to know where it all comes from. And uh, I've had a pretty full life. So... Thought I'd share that with you. You guys have a great night and uh, just doing a little late night computer reading. Uh, so thought I'd put this up for you.